Now, for more on Netflix and how much impact Squid Game is having on the company's global plans, let's bring in Rahul Talang. He is the Trustees Professor of Information Technology at Carnegie Mellon University's Heinz College. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So first, break down the key highlights from the earnings call for Netflix and your reaction to it. I mean, it's kind of expected. I think they already said that unlike last year, the growth in the subscriber will not be super high. And what we see here is it's kind of right there based on the expectation. If anything, it has been a slightly more than what they thought it'll be and what the you know, the market thought it'll be. Same thing with their you know, revenues. I think it has shown the growth. I think they're showing like 17% growth. So my feeling is that, you know, it's kind of right there on the expectation and maybe slightly better. Now, I want to talk about Squid Game, which is the latest phenomenon to really keep Netflix front and center in people's conversations. Talk about the show's impact. I mean, it's, it's, it's clearly huge. I mean, I was reading maybe today or yes, yesterday uh, that Squid Game... <laughs> Sorry? I mean, I was reading yesterday that like the Squid Game has generated close to $900 million worth of revenue or money or value to Netflix. Obviously, how they get the number is nobody knows, but that kind of shows you how important and how influential this particular show has been on Netflix. And Netflix has been, give, has been giving us like a major hit in the past. Uh, this has ex exceeded almost all expectation, and if you you know if you look at TV or if you look at news, uh, this story or the growth in Netflix and people loving it has become really a major story all around. So, for people who aren't sure, uh, who aren't familiar, Netflix uses self-reported viewership numbers. Talk about this approach, this strategy, and some of the skepticism that then comes with gauging the accuracy of these numbers. I think that's a good point. I mean, I mean that's a point basically with all streaming platforms because usually they don't give the inside out, so they, there's no way to kind of audit it, there's no way to confirm it. If you recall, when we used to have the box office in the theaters, those box office numbers used to be public, and we all used to believe that those numbers are actually believable. Right now, you know, these numbers are based on what the streaming platform shows you and the way they count 120 million or 130 million or 100 million. It all depends on how they slice the data. So I think there is some, you know, skepticism. But what I see is that, you know, because the numbers are kind of vague all around, so if you compare one number with the other number, even if they're kind of vague, you get the idea that, this number is bigger, this show is doing better. Is it doing exactly what the Netflix is saying? You don't know that, but I think it gives a pretty good idea that what the show has been doing. And certainly one of the ways that Netflix has been growing its numbers has been from a lot of international content. We've seen uh, they've scooped up a lot of great international content from Africa, from Europe, from Asia. Talk about the role of diverse programming for Netflix's long-term strategy. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the Netflix numbers, the growth has been happening in the international market significantly more uh, compared to U.S. And it's not super surprising. The, in the U.S. market, there are so many streaming players. Disney is there, HBO Max is there, Hulu is there. So clearly the competition is stiff and signing up more customers is not going to be easy. So the growth in the subscriber is going to come from the international market. And naturally, that is gravitating Netflix towards procu procuring shows that will kind of span the whole globe and not being limited to one particular country. So, and again, you know, the, the key is, or the importance is that these shows actually cost significantly less when they are from the developing countries or from the international countries compared to U.S. So... I could be wrong, but what I know is that uh, the Squid Game, the cost of production was merely 30 million. If something like that would have happened in the U.S., I think the number would have been close to 100 million. So clearly, uh, there is that element that the cost is under control, and clear because they are growing internationally, 
they have a lot of opportunity to have this cross-cutting show, which might appeal to a much wider audience and make it more global. Indeed. Well, thank you so much. Great having you on.